operate from a position of honesty today. And not just a position of honesty, but from a position of transparency. So, even with myself, because I'm going to be asking you, you guys some questions, and with the questions that I'm going to be asking you, it may be difficult for you to even want to deal with some of the questions. Because the harsh reality is that Mother's Day and Father's Day will always be a difficult time for certain people. Does that make sense? Because whether it's Mother's Day and you're thinking about the mom that you had who's now gone, that's a difficult time for you. When you're, it's Father's Day and you're thinking about the dad that, that you once had who's now gone, that's a difficult time. Or you're thinking about the mother that you wanted who was never there, but you have to celebrate Mother's Day and that's a difficult time. Or you think about the father who wasn't there, but you're thinking about Father's Day and it can be. We may have come up in similar situations, but some of us came up in some different situations. So, show of hands, how many of us were raised in a two-parent household? How many of you, hands down, how many of you have experienced divorce? After the divorce, you stayed with your mom. So at that point, because we're talking about a level of transparency, because when we talk about fathers, there's, there's, there's a sense of heightened anger when I'm mad at daddy versus when I'm mad at mom. Can we agree or disagree? Talk to me. Agree. Okay. And and why do we think that is so? But in but your situation is different. Because it's the reverse. To where, and when you look at a position of transparency, you have a lot of who says, well, no, I I have a different relationship with my daddy outside of the absentness of my mother. So we, we sit and we may know each other, but the different struggles. So to where a Mother's Day for Alana may not feel like a Mother's Day to somebody else. Therefore, a Father's Day is more, you're more excited to celebrate Daddy because Daddy is present. Does that make sense? You know, so our differences, so in, 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 the, in the harsh reality of what we have to deal with even having to, how many of you have been or uh, have been raised by a person that's not your mama or your daddy? Or you like, like living with you? Yeah, a grandparent, a step parent, uh -oh. an aunt, uncle. Like, like relative. a relative, a friend. Would you say like somebody that like, like when your mom is like working with you, like walk over? Honest with you? Can I be transparent with you? Because for me, I sent, I sent my biological father a happy Father's Day this morning, but I haven't spoken to him since November. And the reality is this, even I love how God works because I could easily get attached to the fact that I haven't spoken to him and allow that to be the premise of my anger, allow that to be the foundation of my attitude, allow that to be the reason why I treat people the way that I treat people or act the way that I act. But versus doing that, I get excited with God because God has given me still an earthly example and earthly fathers that I can go to. For example, if I have a question about my marriage, I can go to my pastor. I can go to Don Gant, another father in the ministry. I can go to Lloyd Austin, another father in the ministry. So God will position people around you and that he wants us to be able to see because we say, but daddy wasn't there, but God was like, but yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Mama wasn't there, but God is like, but yes, I am. Because what about the other women that I put in your life? Because we allow the birth. Society has allowed us to put nurturer over protector. What does a nurturer feel like? Someone that takes care of you. Okay. Adult uh, That's nurturer. Hugs and kisses. Because you're talking about a protector. Oh. So what does nurturer feel like? Hugs and kisses. Hey, stand on the side, boy, you sure look good. That boy's so glad to see you, boy. Boy, that is your love, you boy. You playing, boy, I got that. Boy, I show, boy, you got the shirt, boy, you out of here. Boy, boy, you know, boy, so glad to hang out with you, boy. Golly, you killing me, boy. Let me just look at you, boy. Golly. Like, that's, that's that nurturing feel. That's that nurturing touch. But if I'm operating, because we have to understand that, okay, if we say that, for God so loved the world, that he did what? <laughs> he gave. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Why did God give us Jesus? To, um, to care, okay. To be a nurturer. To be a nurturer, okay. Also protect us. To protect us from ourselves. So now God sent us something. Does nurturer feel like protector? No. Because in that same regard, if it's protecting, if I'm seeing my son, like I'm not, if I'm trying to protect my son from something, it may sound a little more stern. If I know that there's a fire over here, I'm not going to be like, look, son, look, baby, I don't need you to go over there and get burned. It's, no, don't go over there. Don't go that way. Can we see the difference in the feeling? Yes. And we can also see the difference in why the two feelings are celebrated differently. Yeah. But that's, that, but that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. I want, there's a certain feeling to where Ariel, uh, my daughter's using it for example all the time. I mean, they, she talks about my face. Like, my face is serious. So I always have a serious face. And I have a serious face. And I tell her because I, I take my role seriously. Like, in the role of protector, if her and her mom, if they get a bruise, I feel like I didn't do my job. Because I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want them to get bruised. I don't want them to get injured. So when we think about God, when God sent us Jesus, he's sending us not only this nurturer, he's only sent, he also sending us this protector. What else does protector look like? Do I let you just walk in the fire? No. You know, I mean, have, has, has somebody that's trying to protect you had to fuss at you in order to protect you? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment that where you didn't understand the fussing in the moment? Yes. Yeah. But you realize that, okay, I see it now. Have we ever had that kind of moment? To where I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't get it in the moment because I can only see through eyes that are 11 or eyes that are 12 or eyes that are 13 or eyes that are 14. Because my, my, like my mom would always say that. She said, son, one day you'll get 40 your eyes. <laughs> or however old she was at that time. Son, you'll get 45. She still said, no. Son, one day you'll get 70 your eyes. And they're saying that the things that she's seen in that 40, I hadn't lived 40 years. Like you only live the amount of years that you are. Does that make sense? So if somebody is older than you, and if somebody is protecting you, their job as their as that protector is to look through their eyes, not your eyes. Because if my job is to protect you, how can I effectively protect you if I'm looking through your eyes? Talk to me. Well, it won't make sense. I mean, if, if, if I'm, I'm trying to protect you from danger, I'm trying to protect you from this party that you ready to go turn up. All your friends is finna be lit. But if I'm looking through your eyes, we about to go turn up at the lit party where somebody finna get shot. Does that make sense? Versus me saying to you, asking those questions, who's gonna be there? I'm not asking you who's gonna be there because I wanna know. I'm asking who's gonna be there because you there. 
Does that make sense? Because you have to understand that there's a sense of accountability. Even when Jesus is in his protecting robe, when, when David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, when Jesus is in that shepherding robe, every shepherd has a rod and a staff. A rod and a staff. The staff is what the shepherd carried that had the hook on it. Does that make sense? Are you with me? Yes. So that hook, the purpose of the staff Boy, you was right there asleep, boy. I had it. I mean, I, you almost you know, just saved your life from sleep, boy. Ooh, look at heaven, Jesus. Heaven. <laughs> but that staff is just for that reason. I want y'all to see how sleepy he was. He was right there. He was there. He was about to fall on you. But uh, that staff is exactly for that. Like, this is a staff moment to where that staff will wrap and pull him back mm -hmm. from sleep death. He was getting ready to fall, but that staff hooked around him and pulled him in. The rod say, Negro, if you fall asleep on me, I will grab you all up in your chest. That rod of correction, but that staff of protection. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So if we say thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's saying that I'm accepting to his correction. Does that make sense? Because how many of us don't mind being corrected by God? I don't. I don't Let's talk to you. There we go. That's how we can. There we go, baby. Yeah. Baby said, I don't. Oh, hold on. Yes, I, 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 I do. Because I'm like, sometimes, Lord, I do mind. But, Lord, I like doing it like that. I said, but that ain't, that ain't who I called you to be. That ain't what I call you to do. So, thank you, baby. Yeah, she jumped out there real holy and then got real cold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not excited every time God changed something in my life. I'm not excited that every time God fixed something in my life. I'm not excited. But but why do I accept it? Why do you accept it, baby? Because um, I trust him. Okay. And I know that he wouldn't do anything to harm me. Wouldn't do anything to harm me. Because if this is the same God who says, for I know the plans I have for you. Why do you trust? Why are you okay with it? Because if he takes something out of your life that's not supposed to be in your life, maybe he'll give, he'll give you something better. Absolutely, because that's the kind of God that we serve. God, God is not going to see us on a down playing field. Like, God don't want to see you down. God don't want to see you hurt. So God was like, oh, okay, preacher, and as a man of God, why, why did I have to do that? He's still your father. Still my father. Mm -hmm. And what does the Bible say? Honor. Honor. Talk, sir. Way to come in late, but come in heavy. I like <laughs> honor your mother and your father. So in a position of honoring him or her is recognizing the position. You may not be in agreement with their plan or with their process, but I can't change their position. And their position is mother or father. Does that make sense? And that's the thing. So as I, if I want to be blessed, if I want God to bless me, my life, my marriage, my family, I still have to be honoring to my mother and my father. Does that make sense? You have to realize that when we're talking about these commandments and these things that God is asking us to do, God is not asking you to do these things so it's contingent for the other person. No, it's for you. It's for you. You can, people are walking around mad at daddy or mad at mama and they're operating in a broken life and God is saying, no, but I can make you whole. Hmm. Like you don't have to operate in brokenness or bitterness or in hurt because that's not the position that God called you to be in. Because when you get past the broken, when you get past the bitter, you say, well, look, I'm, I'm going to give, put all my trust in a father that has never failed me. Because what's so awesome about God, God is God said to us when he said to Moses, I am that I am. Essentially, what does that mean? I am God, but not only am I God, I'm the God that you need me to be. So if I need daddy, what is God? If I need mama, what is God? If I need a brother, what is God? 
If I need a sister, what is it? Sister. If I need a friend, what is it? Friend. So that's what I'm saying. So when we look at it, we put tangible people in these categories. Because how many of us have picked friends that didn't really show themselves to be friendly? You know, they would hate, tell our business, do all this other stuff. But you say you're my friend, but oh, that's my BFF. She's so cool. That's my boy. No, no. And then we put all this trust. We put this trust because we we told an earthly person more of our business than we've told our God. Have we not? I'm just, we're just keeping it on it. Like you didn't told your, like that's things you told your closest friend that you hadn't told your God. As if <laughs> he don't know. Right. Like as <laughs> if God gonna be like, you did what? <laughs> that ain't the God that we serve. When we go to God and say, I did what I did, God gonna say, I know. I forgive you. What took you so long? <laughs> Tell me. But we'll go, we'll call a friend right now. Man, let me tell you. Man, listen, I thought I thought he loved me. <laughs> he wrote me a letter. I saw it with Keisha the cafeteria. <laughs> but we're telling this person, like we're pouring out our hurt, all of our hurt, all this thing, all this stuff, and we're pouring this out to another person that doesn't have the capability of changing the hurt. They can still hear it, but 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 God is saying, but when are you gonna come to to that? Because you you you've been in this space, you you've been in this place, you've been in this situation, and I'm always available for you. I'm always willing to listen. Because going back to our text, you say, for God so loved who? The world. Who? Wow. Black people? No. White people? Yeah. Everything. Asian people? No. Just, just, just short people. Like no. little bit of people with legs. And... <laughs> just, just tall people. Everything in the world. Just all y'all with braids. Y'all really got some braids in the building today. I just want to let y'all know some real Afrocentric looks going on today. We got some braids and top boots going on. All right. But I mean, but how many times do we segregate ourselves though? Every day. We're open, right? Like, like that ain't my clique. I don't, I don't, I don't hang with them suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know them lames. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, man, come on, bro. You know we don't hang with you like that. How many times we do that? Like, as soon as we go into a room, we're like. Oh my God, rest like people. Oh my God, <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, Steve, like we step over people. We step over people, yes, sir. And then you know what's the worst? Like, when you Tell me the worst. Tell me the worst. That's what I don't know. Like when you go to lunch and your friends ain't there yet, so you just sit there lonely until they come. With people around you. With other people there. And you feel like it's other people, people there. Like you said, now you sitting there. You. <laughs> <laughs> And as soon as you see that one person, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God is, do we ever get excited to love on God like that? Like, you ever felt lonely because you didn't feel that God was there? And then you're like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. You showed up, thank you, homie. Thank you, thank you. You was going to make it on this test. In some <laughs> situations. In some situations. But we should have them in all situations. In all that just that sense. But but we say, but if God so loved the world, right, then we and we segregate ourselves. Like we separate ourselves to people who and what do we separate ourselves into? What kind of category? Like what? It's your friends and they're not certain. Okay, they're just my friends, but your friends are your friends because of what? They have something in common. Something in common. Something in common. You see okay. yourself in them. You see yourself in them, possibly. No. They chill. They chill. They chill. They chill. And we so vague. And that's the thing. We vague. So the thing is like, you can be.
be my friend because you're chill. Mm -hmm. But if we look at chill, like, like, like liberty chill may be different from my chill. You know what I mean? But we just saying because they chill and that person or that same person that you're putting their chill on still may be different from your chill. Because you may chill and do stuff that I don't want to do. And not saying that I'm hating on you or, you know, good, bad, and different. I'm just not into that. But now we feel like we're obligated to this friendship that's built on a false premise. Because how many, how many of you have became, you thought this was your friend, but then you realize later, it's not really the kind of setup I want to, I mean, I know I talk about people, but you messy mess. <laughs> Like you like they want to jump on me every day, Nancy. And I'm just not I'm just not like that. I mean, I roast people there once in a while, but you just you're doing too much. And if that ain't your thing, and it's but we but but we often we segregate ourselves in these social things, like I said, we wait on our friends in the cafeteria, we do this, but we say we operate under the same umbrella for God so love who? The world. What if God wait on his friends to show up in the cafeteria? Just only the people that was his friend, that was in his clique. Because I don't want you to feel that just because you come to church, you're in the clique. Oh, no, nah, boo-boo, don't, don't do that to yourself. Don't think just because you show up on Sunday, you in the clique. Or just because you show up on Wednesday, you in the clique. No, 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 no. no. Like what 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 certifies you for this clip? How you got in, baby? Oh, well I think like when you accept Jesus and you're saved. Oh, that's it. That'll get you in. That'll get you in. What else will get you in? Nothing. Honor God. That'll get you in. What else will get you in? Give your life to God. That'll get you in. What else will get you in? Baptized. Or saved, or for God so loved the who? The world. What else will get you in? Being part of the world. Say it again. Loving the world. No, somebody said being part of it. Just being part of the world. Just, that's it. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't want us to operate like we got to continue to segregate ourselves. If God so loved the who? The world. He ain't just loving the saved folk. He ain't just loving the folk that he gave. What about the person that don't know God? God said, I still love them too. The drug dealer, I love him. The prostitute, I love him. The mother that went away, I love him. The father that didn't show up, I love him. And God puts his premise. So God so loved the who? The world. That he did what? He gave. Y'all say what? Slow down. Y'all rest. I know y'all know it. Y'all smart. Y'all ain't thinking. <laughs> So God so loved the world that he gave. So provider. Now you have God who can be God and look down. God can say, I'm going to look over the balconies of heaven. And I'm going to look down at this world. But the daddy in him saw the need in us. And you have to understand there's a difference between our needs and our wants. Because the daddy in him saw the Jesus that we needed, not the God that we wanted. Because when we in sin, we want to be there. Yes, no. When you making a decision and you made this decision, and when you say that I'm going to sin, any category of sin, if you are not having fun in the sin, then you're doubly wasting your time. So you go sin and not have fun in the sin, then really don't sin. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I'm asking the question again. How many of us have had fun in the sin? Well, you know you weren't supposed to be now. But it was just too late. It was just too late in that moment. You said, I'm going to deal with the consequences. No longer going to kill me, but I'll rise again like Jesus. But I'm going to deal with the sin, y'all. Because I'm going to have fun. They're going to be hit. And I know it. when they do that right there, Jesus, I'm going to be ready. 
So we in the moment of the sin. So we're having this position of a good time in this moment. And that's why I'm saying, like, God didn't send us because we want it. We want it. God, okay, I, I want this deliverance. We want this free. We want this relationship with you. Daddy's looking down, seeing the relationship that we need. So have you ever had a parent or a provider to see something that you needed? To where you say, I don't want them shoes. But you need these. I don't want to wear that, but you need a dress for church. Or I don't need it. I don't want that, but you need it. Have we ever had that happen? Yes. To where you end up getting what you needed versus what you wanted and then appreciated the need later. Has that ever happened? Mm -hmm. I, I yes, no, maybe so. You got to talk to them. I'm not going to preach this by myself. The need is better than the want. In those moments, it just all depends. I'm not, I'm not saying which one is better. I'm just saying, have we been in need? Have you ever been in need, but you spent your money on what you wanted? Oh, yes. And then came back, no, I need a. No, I need a. But what happened? But I wanted the burger. <laughs> but now I need a notebook for school. <laughs> you know, so just this stuff that I want and I need. So what if what if God just only gave us our wants? Because can, can we agree that some of our wants ain't been good wants? You know, I mean, I mean uh, granted, some of you, you can. It's like, I have you ever wanted it at the time? It's like, man, I wanted that bigger piece of cake at the time. But then when I started eating it, I realized I didn't really want that much. It was a lot sweeter than what I thought. Now it's hurting my teeth. But at the time, it was so amazing. The chocolate cake was running off the side of the plate. The icing looked amazing. I love chocolate. I know I love cake. Everything looked amazing. I really got this big, big piece. But I only took two bites of it. But at the time, I wanted the big piece. But once I got the piece that I really wanted, that I thought that I wanted, I realized I didn't really need that much. And I, now I'm dealing with the regret. Like eating a big piece of cake, and then you need to, oh my gosh, I need to What did I do to myself? <laughs> yeah. That's it right there. I think I'm about to have a six year old. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, that's that after Thanksgiving, right? You... Oh God. God, why didn't you just be a fence between me and the table, Jesus? <laughs> oh, Jesus. That itis. That itis, right there, right there. I don't have itis, but my family does. Oh, oh, oh so, you don't, so you don't eat no sleep. I don't sleep. sleep. I just. I'm just, okay, so, there you go. So everybody else sleep, you just watch them sleep. I'm watching that. <laughs> I'm watching that <laughs> But no, so we have these moments, right? So we, I see it in our wants and these things, but and, and it's things that we feel like sometimes we really, really want, right? But I really, but I really, really want it. And God is like, but we, I, I see what you need. So we have, for God, so what? Love. For God, so Love. the world. world that he gave. He gave us what we wanted. No. He gave us what? His, His only son. And he gave us what we needed. Who we needed. Mm -hmm. So when we look at, he gave. Gave. So he, he provided a sense of provision. Then think about what God gave. Did he give us somebody that was going to be a genie? No. He gave us. Like he, 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 gave, he gave his son. If I think about, come here. So if I come here, so if I have, if, let's say, me and my son, just like, because you got glasses, you got a, you know, the waves coming in, I got to see the ball went on the end. He think he got a higher wave count than what I had. And I had to show him the day his wave count stopped at 10. And I was in the middle of my head. I had like eight more to go. So eight plus 10, you've been a smart guy that you are. That's like 18. So that means he got eight more to go. Thank you for what you are saying. So if I'm with my son, me and my son, like we in heaven. We walk in each other, we got Xboxes. We got a place there. Which face down you playing Fortnite? All right, what's your face? <laughs> First of all, y'all don't even see what me and my son are doing. Y'all been in heaven yet? <laughs> so me and my son, we hanging out, we doing our thing, and I take my son and I say, "Look, son, here's a world, and the world is in turmoil. 
You got these folks over here, they fighting, they hating on each other. This group here, they hating on each other. This group here, they hating on each other. You got mothers turning against daughters, fathers turning against sons. And this is terrible. Like, I mean, we hanging out. Like, we got our own thing going on up here. But, son, I got to send you down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, 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 but the thing is, I got to send you to die for them. Mm. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know, I know it's going to be all right. I know. So, son, I'm sending you to die for that group that's fighting each other. I'm sending you. I know, listen, we got we, we good or do we eat your straight fruit? Like, uh, you know, I like so you know, I should have known that you like Chipotle because you might sound like you know I like Chipotle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chipotle, you like the bowls or you like the wraps? I like the wraps. You like the wraps? Okay. So we got so we got look, we got wraps on wraps on wraps. All the kind of wraps we want up here. We good up here. So now I, I, I'm getting ready to separate you from Chipotle. Like he's not where I'm, where I'm sending you. There, there, there isn't Chipotle. There. You know, there isn't Xbox there, there's no Fortnite there, none of that's there. I'm sending you to take on their sin. So I'm sending you from our comfort to die for them. Okay? Now, how here we have the position. Here we have, let's say, this conversation. How do you feel daddy feels? Why? Because he's giving up his son. What son? His only. Talk the text to me. His only son. Cause I, like, it ain't like they hanging out over there. And I'm like, I love you, boy. You're the oldest. This is what's going to happen. You're going to squat up. Like 300, you 12 years old. You better come back with the wolf on your back. You know, I don't, you know. No, this is my only. This this is my role, dog. This is who I hate. This is my son. This is who I hang out with. This is my only son. But now I got to send my son to die. How would you feel about it? Parent perspective. They're going to have to struggle today. They're going to they gonna be shot today. Somebody, they're going to keep fighting today. But now let's look at it from son perspective. How do you think Jesus felt about it? You're leaving your son. You're leaving your father. So, I don't care about what? Oh, oh, was it? Oh, was it? Send me, I'll go. Send me, I'll go. Why do you think it was send me, I'll go? Because if he had to go, say again. If you had to go, it would be, it would be the same because. Well, I mean, close to it. But why do you think Jesus? When Daddy looked at his son, they still trying to do it from some perspective. Yeah, I mean, some perspective. So, Daddy looks at his son, gives the direction, gives the plan. This is what's about to happen. Son looks back at his father now and says, "Send me, I'll go." Say again. He knew his role. He knew how important it was. That's 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 point. All right, so we are we getting closer to it. We getting closer to it. What did he say? Trying to show his dad how. He said he knew his role, but. Even before that, even before that, okay, which, what, what, what we got? He loved the world too. Okay, he loved the world too. That, that's part of it. You have to obey your parents. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? You have to obey your parents. Said it. Mm -hmm. I just want to shake your hand. You have to obey your parents. Yeah, obey. Yeah. Yep. It, was his, it was daddy talking to his son. Now, now, think about the relationship that they got. They in heaven together. So do you, do you, like, if he hanging out with me, don't you feel that he know who I am? Like, as if, like, we hanging out. That, that, do you think he know the characteristics of his dad? To where, if this is my only son, and if he trusts me, and understands his position is to honor, and if I'm sending him into a situation that I still have to be a part of the plan. Does that make sense? He had trust enough in daddy to say, send me, I'll go, because he knew who was sending him. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you. Thank you, sir. But send me, I'll go. So when, when God is speaking, so now you have God who said, I, I, I gave my only begotten son, the only son that was given to me. I've given him to you. And you have Jesus who is a, a, accepting because is it, do we feel, didn't, didn't Jesus demonstrate that he accepted the call? When did he have an attitude about coming? I gotta go down that side and save them folks. You talking to a homeboy, man, what you gotta do, man? My dad didn't told me. I gotta go down the earth. Oh. Oh my god, I gotta go down here and save these folks. How long you gotta be down there, man? 33 years. Go down. I gotta pop in the Mary. Come on. I'm a stepdaddy because God is my daddy. Joseph is the other daddy. He's just a baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I gotta go down here. 33 years when I'm terrible. Then I gotta lay low for 30 years. And then in my last three years, I gotta pop up on the scene. <sighs> Heal the blind. Praise the dead. Then he want me to get on a cross and die. I ain't even do nothing though. <laughs> they gonna take me from judgment hall to judgment hall. They gonna they gonna beat me. They gonna pull the skin off of my back. I'm gonna be bruised and blooded for a people man. <sighs> Yeah, that's what my weekend looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't Jesus. Like he accepted the direction. He accepted the responsibility. He accepted what, what, what his father had said. He accepted the calling on his life. He accepted the purpose for his life. When he allowed his daddy to speak into his life. And it was so hard for his daddy that while he was dying on the cross, his daddy had to look away. Because it was just that hard for him to see his only son take on our sins. So when we look at the positions that we're in in life, when we look at the things that we're going through, you have to understand that you don't have to operate from a position of bitterness and brokenness. Because that level of sacrifice, the only thing, there's one thing that stands out to me that, that, that my father did, that I always remember. I mean, outside of, you know, if, if anything, I always look at my father from this perspective. I tried to be the husband that he wasn't. I tried to be the father that he wasn't. So if you gave me, some people get the blueprint on what to do. Some people get the blueprint on what not to do. <laughs> Either way, I'm thankful for the blueprint. One thing that I remember that my father did, I just got Christmas time bikes. Y'all don't even know nothing about this no more. Y'all don't even ride bikes, you got Fortnite. Yeah. They come outside. I want a bike. Shopping carts. Yeah, shopping carts on for it. That ain't just say I'm talking about on Christmas morning to get a new bike. You about to lose your mind. I'm talking about you got no. I, two Christmases ago, I went outside. Two Christmases ago, me and my wife go outside. Um, were you in Florida during this Christmas? Oh, you going this time? No, you were there. You were on punishment for the gifts. You couldn't open your gifts. That's what it was. Oh, <laughs> wow. Who are you? That's yeah. sad. Wow. No, because, because she was on punishment because she had the nerve to say, and we were bringing the stuff out. She said, this it? <laughs> I mean, the only reason she was able to open gifts 
later because my mama called and said, let that baby open them gifts. Yeah. But yeah, but that's brought on the road. But yeah, well, yeah, so he knows what, that's where it was. So while she wasn't opening gifts, we were outside. And we were doing some yard work. And then it just hit me. Like, I'm standing outside in Christmas morning. Look down the street. Look down the street. Where is everybody? <laughs> Ain't no kid outside. The last outside generation was the first generation raising schoolers. Raising school. Oh, oh, raise okay. school. Not oh, okay. electric. No, raise oh, okay. school. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kick it. Yeah. <laughs> Go heel and like kicking your boot, you ain't got no legs. Like <laughs> got that real, that, that real takeoff strength. Sometimes you gotta break your ankle when the metal hits your ankle. Oh, the oh, legs still on my back. Yeah, you know when the brakes go out, you gotta stop with the side of the shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I about to the man. <laughs> but you got. But that last, like, going outside, so we go outside, and I'm like, man, any bikes? Nobody going up, because I remember this one bike I saw, and then I got the commercial bike. I actually got the commercial gift, like the gift I've been seeing all season advertised with this Huffy. It was BMX Huffy, red and white, mm. had the Huffy foam pad right there, bars was perfect, seat low, tilted up, so when I'm sitting and I'm riding that joke, I'm looking. <laughs> speak with my right hand. <laughs> and then it was perfect for hook sliding. No, what is hook sliding when you come up real fast and you whip that thing in your boy? That hook sliding when you can make the dirt. <laughs> you, are, you come in and slide that mug all the way. Ooh, hook slide. Man, handlebar ride, you can't do all them tricks. Be able to ride on your bike on the handlebar this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. Man. You know how to what, do that. What? Walk your bike? That's like riding a mm -hmm. motorcycle and all that. That's what I'm thinking I used to play. Oh. That's why I still play now. That like, sounds like safe. But yeah, walk my bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took you fell, but you know what I But. <laughs> Stop trying to do that. But yeah, you know, bike ramps. <laughs> yeah, cuts and bruises down from playing. But. I remember getting this bike. See, this is the bike I want. So I got the bike, and I'm talking about two, not even 48 hours. You brought the time. Somebody they got me. Oh, what? They stole it? I come up, I'm at my bar crib. See, I'm at the, I'm at, I'm down the house, down the street, at my bar crib. You know, the pull up day, we hop off for the bike stop. Like, you ride up, hop off. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we're a bike just found in the front yard. Like, and they're like, you just come to my mama's house with like 15 bikes in the front yard. I'm gonna pull up, work during the summer, blowing the horn, because I didn't forgot. I forgot she get home by four. Yeah. And she come in, boom, 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 bikes all in the driveway, house full of folks. Mama like, everybody get me. <laughs> everybody get me. Like, get all these bikes, get all these. Cause that was our house. Our house was that house. Like everybody came to our house. Matt Small going at ping pong table. So everybody came and hung out at the crib. So it was there. So I'm down the street in my boy crib. We hopped off the bike. We in his house. We're on that Sega playing Mortal Kombat. Never forget it. Mm -hmm. This is how I just learned the blood code. A B A C A B B. Still remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so got this. Playing the video game. And then uh, my other homeboy, he, he come up later. And he was like, I thought y'all said y'all was on y'all bikes. Well, yeah, they were outside. It's like, ain't no bikes out there. Oh. And it's like seven bikes. I died. Like seven bikes. They didn't got seven bikes. How do you still have seven bikes? Like, they just had a van. No, they had a van. Like, they had a van. Mm -hmm. And right, because that's what it was. Like, it was just neighborhood. Growing up like that, we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't chain up no bikes. They had no bike chain. They had no bike helmet. You know, just riding your bike. So, bike in the front yard. So, that, it was like common. That's all I knew. Bike in the front yard. Just bike in the front yard. Like, I literally, like, I grew up to leave my bike outside at night. You know, and, but until this happened. So, seven bikes gone. Come out. Boom. And right now, I'm sick. Come and tell my dad. I'm up at the grocery store. This happened two days later. Um, so, probably this, that, next, that following weekend, I'm at the grocery store. And I see my bike.
Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. Somebody on it. I see my body. Let me tell you that was right. I was definitely, let me tell you why. Because this doing the, like this doing the right on my book bag days, like right on my property days. You know what I'm saying? Like you get a brand new book bag and have it look like trash because you done wrote so much dumb stuff on it. And then with the white out pens and all that, you got all your friends then signed it and all that and all that kind of stuff. So doing that day. So when you got your bikes, uh, I'm from down the bay. So it's uh, downtown Mobile, but it's down the bay. So we call it down the bay. And we be like DTB and they're down the bay boys. So I put DTBB on the inside of my thing, on the inside of other thing. We had markers and everybody put DTBB down the bay boys. So we sit down, I'm looking. Me and my mom going to the grocery store. She ain't even thinking about it, but I'm sick. It's my bike. Walking in the grocery store, I'm like, yeah, look like my bike. Dude, older dude was sitting on it. He was about, I'm about 10, down to 10, but he's about 30. Oh, because he, 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 he was my age, he was on the top of me. I need that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, we, uh, so I'm sitting there, dude, do this. So I'm telling my mom, like, that's my bike. My mom was like, how you know that's your bike? Me and the little folk being mama. So I go home. I was like, Dad, that's my bike. She's like, you sure? Dad, that's my bike. Dad, come on. Dad, you get in the truck. Ride up there. Dude's still sitting up there. Dude's sitting up there. I never forget. He's sitting up there, posted up on my bike, cigarette, yeah. everything. Yeah. You know, my daddy, my daddy, we, we walking up to the bike again. Dad said, you sure that's your bike? No, like that. Right, so I said, I know, man, that's my bike, like right that. And I'm like, I like, I know, I know the neighborhood we living in, and I know ain't nobody else got that bike. Cause even out of the seven that stole, mine was the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but now, so I know it's my bike. So we going up, we go to the dude. My dad say, uh, hey man, so where'd you get that bike? And dude say, uh, who wanna know? Like right that. So at this point, so my dad, you know, but at that age, I don't know them cues yet. You know? So my dad say, the person who bought it, want to know where you got it from, because the last time I seen it, it was in my yard. Like that. So at this point, you know, I didn't kind of stepped out from behind my dad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and no, 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 I'm ready not to dad in the square up now. So he didn't he didn't step there. He got his chest out. So, you know, because in my mind, like, like you, you don't know who my dad is. You know, so I got my chest out. You know, and daddy, daddy say, no, um, undo that top part right there. Because my daddy, he knew where we was because he, he bought it. He had got onto us for right on the bikes. Like that. My dad said, I strapped that top part right there to say Huffy. And the guy was like, for what? So my dad reached over there and snatched it, like snatched it off. And they had DTBB down the bay boy on them. My dad uh, took the dude, pushed him up against the thing, snatched the bike from up under. And so at that point, boy, I'm walking. <laughs> like a full-like cowboy. Now, boy, I'm looking at other people. Who else wants something? He rides in the house, baby. <laughs> My dad would take the bike, throw it on the back of the truck. We pull off right into the sunset. But but I'll never forget that moment because in spite of in spite of my like growing even growing up, I had to get my first job because my dad wouldn't support me when it was time to graduate from high school and pay for high school expenses. I had to take more loans because dad wouldn't support me in those things. Dad wasn't there. Dad wasn't there to tell me about this. Dad wasn't there to tell me about that. But I remember that example because it reminds me of how my heavenly father is. That if I feel like my back is against the wall, if I feel like I'm in danger, if I feel like I'm hurting, if I feel like I'm in a situation, I feel like my heavenly, I know that my heavenly father would operate in that same capacity. That he would show up, pull up, and if I needed my bike back, he would get my bike back. 
If I needed my joy back, he would get my joy back. If I needed my peace back, my love back, my hope back, my dreams back, whatever the enemy stole from me, I know I can go to daddy about it. So I remember that happening with my daddy just to keep me connected with my daddy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. When we operate in the space that we operate in, when we do the things that we do, because how many of us mess up? Every day. Every day. We mess up every day. And we need daddy to provide for us. We need daddy to protect us. And we deal with brokenness, we deal with those hurts, but, but God said, I'll never leave you off of safe. And he proved that to us because he gave his only son. He showed you how serious he was about it because he gave his only son. He showed you how for real he was about loving you because he gave his only son to die for you. Like that in itself, that point in itself, when you look at, wow. Because what if I was to only operate in the stuff that my earthly father didn't do for me? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be good. Like, like what, if I just, what if I just built my life on it? Wouldn't be the person I was. And how many of us how many of us think that we fall short sometimes just because of the past hurts? Uh, like we don't do everything that we're supposed to do because of past hurts, because of past letdowns, because of past disappointments. And God is saying, but your future is so much brighter than your past. Because your past is where? In the past. It's behind you. It's behind you. That's why you call it past. It's called past. Back there. Behind you. If I'm looking at my future, it's ahead of me, right? It's what I'm seeing. My, my future, it, it's supposed to look brighter because that's the direction that I'm looking in. And if, I, if I'm pressing and if my eyes are always fixed on the hills from which cometh my help, then I don't have to worry about looking back in my past. And that's where God wants us to be today. He wants us to get past our broken passes. He wants us to get past our bitter passes. And God is like, no, I'm a right now God. I'm an in this season kind of God. I'm a take care of that hurt, take care of that brokenness, and put a smile on your face kind of God to have you walking and talking with me as if you're talking to your physical father or if you're talking to your physical mother. God is saying that I need to come into your life and you have a relationship with me that same relationship that you have with Facebook, spend that time with me. That same relationship that you spend with Instagram, spend that time with me. That same story and the hurt that you're telling your friend, tell me. The Bible tells us that God wants us to cast our cares on him. That's everything that we give him. He didn't ask for part of it. He said all of them. Any and everything that we're going through, we can go to God about it. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That he wants to be that father in your life. He wants to be that mother. He wants to be that person that feels the hurt, that feels those broken places. God created you for greatness. And we can't be great when we stuck and broke. Because the thing is, the fault of mama or daddy not being there is not your responsibility. It's theirs. They have to give an account for that. When you get to heaven, God is not going to say to you, where were you? He's going to say to you, where did you think I was? Now, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, or if Jamal's not doing what he's supposed to do, or if Sandra's not operating in her capacity, we're not operating in the roles that we're supposed to operate, God is going to ask us, well, yeah, where were you? I gave you a responsibility over children. Where were you? Our responsibility is not your accountability. Your mama not being there is not your fault. Your daddy not being there is not your fault. 
That's not your fight. Does that make sense? What you are held accountable to is understanding who God is and who God is trying to put in your life. God is saying to you, you worried about a person that is gone, but I got three other people that I put in your life that you don't even see. That problem that you're struggling with, I gave you the answer years ago in that Sunday school teacher, in your fifth grade English teacher, in that youth leader or counselor. I gave you that person that you can go to. I know what you were dealing with, and I gave you the resource. But you were so connected to an earthly parent that you missed your spiritual parent. Does that make sense? Yes. Because even with individuals that are raised in two-family households, God still provides spiritual counsel, spiritual guidance, spiritual leadership. Like I told Nia, she's a um, next one in college. Hold you. You get ready to go to college too? Or you get ready to graduate from high school? Get done with high school? And we were talking and we were having this conversation and in that premise, like, like when you talk about a man in your life, at that point, God needs to be that man in your life because we don't care nothing about y'all. Never <laughs> being in college, you know you're just, a, you're just the next chick that's on the list. Sad. Is it sad or is it just the truth? It's the truth. So if you know what it is, and you know who you are, and you know whose you are, and you know who your daddy is, this shouldn't even impact you. But as wolves, as young men, as wolves, as wolves, as wolves, baby pup, but you getting that? As wolves, <laughs> as wolves that have to be contained. Like we have to learn to treasure women. And it's rare at 16 and 17 years old, we know that. So if you're expecting us to treat you a certain way, then you roll in the dice. But if you say, I know how my God will treat you. Because the love that I have for him, it'll make you love and value yourself. You cannot when I say Wednesday night, you can't be what I say, what in I say. your feelings. You can't walk down Slap Street. We talk about Slap Street. No, 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 no. no. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You can't operate with a trashy or thotty. Oh, okay. That's where the word is. Okay. Premise. And, then, like and it be expected to be treated like a queen. Mm -hmm. Or you can't act like Get you are thug, get <laughs> over this way, and expect to be treated like a king. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, it don't go the same way. So when you know who you are, when you know who your father is, your spiritual father is, who daddy is, you got to carry yourself like one of his heirs. How many of us ever seen um, um, I don't know if it's a show uh, I think uh, Growing Up Hip Hop oh. I like Growing Up Hip Hop and it's a lot of you know and a lot of people think you know like people tied to rich parents you know they're typically spoiled right it's kind of like the the norm that kind of comes with that but why do you think that that child is that way because their parents worked hard for the money I'm guessing no. that's possible because emotionally they weren't there, but physically they were giving them money and stuff. But That's possible. It's usually they receive more. So a person that's typically in that position act like the position that they in. Correct? Mm -hmm. So when you know, like that person, and the thing is, you may, you may see, and some of y'all may be in this position where, you're like, you ain't spending your money. <laughs> You ain't saucy because you're spending your money. You're spending somebody else's money. And they got you fly, and they got that, but you are operating in the capacity that you're in. And God is like, but what about me? Like, when are you going to operate in the capacity that I have you? To where you, you reflect, like, to where people act like where they are. So if I say, I'm a child 
of the king. Right? Yeah. This is what we say, right? That if we're children of God, I mean, if, if you're not feeling, I mean, let me know. Do we feel that we are children of the king? Okay. So we feel that we're children of the king. Like, should we act like princes and princesses? Yes. Like, should we carry ourselves like royalty? If the king is your daddy, should you not act like royalty? If you don't act like royalty, then what happens? What happens? Nobody's going to treat you like royalty. Does that make sense? So now that we know that we're children of the king, as we get ready to leave here today, I want us to understand that whatever it is that you're going through, all heads bow, all eyes closed in this moment right here.